Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Iron Panther Presents. Uh, today, Stacey and I shall be discussing available wife. What that even means, I don't even know. Uh, but it's a movie on the Urban Movie Channel that was premiered this week. Um, and what is this about? Um, I have to say, to me, I feel like uh, it's similar to Empire and Cookie Lion because it's about a woman named Nicole Wright who hustles her way to being the CEO of a record label and uh, it just basically all goes to shit. I mean, just just very quickly. She's not a businesswoman by her own admission. Um, and it's very obvious in her management style. Um, and shit goes bad and she get what she deserves. Um, she wrote, she came up in a broken home um, because of the mom, which is different. Usually we see the man, man ain't shit, but in this time the mom ain't shit. And this Nicole became not shit. Like she, you know, she just repeated the cycle um, actually. Um, so it really is all about how you were raised. I mean, I guess nature, nature versus nurture. Uh, all right, Stacey, what are your thoughts? I think it's good to see like the breadwinning wife that goes left and leaves the husband at home with the kids and he's suffering. He's like, I love you. We should make our marriage work. You know, I'm your partner. Let's, you know, do this together. And she's like, nah, fuck you. I got the money. You stay home with the kid. I'm about to be out here on this jet with this young boy. Kingston. Yeah. So yeah, we get we get the other side of the philandering spouse. However, I will say that it does start off as you would imagine. So Nicole falls in love uh with the local, you know hip-hop star slash thug type dude um they they move in they get married they have a son um and he's coming up in the move in the music game kind of like lucius lion you know what I'm saying they got a makeshift studio in the house he's writing songs and he gets picked up she's she's a as, aspiring singer which she never sings in, in this at all so i'm not sure why they wrote that in the script um but uh but anyway at some point though he's big man husband's like paying the bills, taking care of the house, and treating his wife like all these other black men do. They were two months behind on the mortgage. Excuse me. He was supposed to be the primary breadwinner, though. How about that? Yeah. That was supposed to be his role. But two months behind on the rent, and he's fucking around on her. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, she's like, I sacrificed my career. To, does this sound familiar? I sacrificed my career to be, take care of this family, to help you raise a family. He's like, girl, you didn't sacrifice shit. I keep you here in Gucci and gold. Loving basketball. Because Terry loved that movie. She got that movie confused with um, Waiting to Excel. It's the same dude, but like she got confused. She was like, I said, babe, he said that in Loving Basketball. He didn't say that in Waiting to Excel. That don't make any sense. Anyway, I you digress. supposed to be remaking that. Which one? Waiting to Excel. No, 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 no. They make a part two. That's what they're saying. Oh, I thought it was doing a series or something. I was like, this is going to be horrible. But go ahead. Yeah, it's supposed to be like, but like Whitney Houston's dead, so I don't know how they can work that in. I don't. Know, I mean, she's like one of the main characters, so I don't know how they can figure that shit out. Maybe they'll replace her with you know somebody else. Um, yeah, keep it moving. So someone who can sing. I don't know Rihanna. Who's old enough? It's a good question. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. The point is, at some point, Nicole, that's key character, Cole Wright. She crying. She like, how did I get in this bad marriage? I'm trying to be good to this man. He treated me like shit. Her toddler's sitting up there, not knowing, not caring. He's a kid. You know, he don't care. You little dark skinned kid. We'll talk about that later. So then, we'll talk about that. Mm. Anyway, Nicole goes to the bathroom. She's crying. She says, You know what? I'm about to start doing me. Somehow, she comes up with a plan of she goes out on the streets. Her and her friend Megan, the dark skinned friend, the darker, thicker friend who's in the back of the light-skinned girl, Nicole, who hits the front of this movie. Once again, dark-skinned, dark, bigger women are put to the back of the, of the bus, if you will. Anyway, Nicole meets a lawyer named Walter behind me. Walter introduces Nicole to his friend named Cole, who like runs like some type of record industry. Like, like He's always like a P. Diddy, if you will. That's how, that's how he imp impacted me. Anyway, Walter and Nicole come up with the idea that Nicole's going to be uh, the CEO guy's side piece for a while. Somehow they know or wait around until he's about to die uh, uh, um, unexpectedly. And then they, they 
forge his will to give everything to Nicole instead of his business partner, Walter. Doesn't make any sense. Or his children. Or his children. So his daughter, Stephanie or some shit. Anyway, his daughter's fighting. What's daughter's name? It doesn't really matter. The daughter's like, she's like, hey, why? how is it? That, uh, Alicia? Alisa? Alisa. 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 Yeah. So she, she starts fighting for years to get, why did her father leave all his, his, all his wealth to this woman? And uh, what about me? And that becomes a problem. And for some reason, Walter and Nicole just think this is a good idea to keep the original will that they, that they replaced with a forgery. Just one bad decision after another. Just, yes. Oh, man. Yeah. So then, anyway, so we, we see her in a minute. Like, once she's crying on the floor, next minute she's walking in, bawling, she, her chest out. She, she's know. Going not wearing yeah, blouses. All times, boobs out. Just, just cleavage. Because that's how she, she told her friend Megan once, quote, I don't know business. I know men. That's how she made it from point A to point B. And I'm like, and that's tr- absolutely true because she makes no effort to run this, this 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 record label in any kind of logical way. Anytime Megan says, hey, we're about to go under. We are, we can't even make payroll. That's first scene. Like first scene, she like, hey girl, we broke. Like we need to do something. And, she, and Nicole's like, blah, 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 blah. We'll figure it out. I just gotta go get some more credit from somewhere. In walks Kingston, the uh, Chris Brown uh, wannabe uh, behind Stacy over there, and um, he because he's the hottest thing on social media. Um, and all of a sudden, Nicole's like, "Hey, he and he alone is gonna save our whole record label. Mm-hmm. We just gotta give him whatever he wants. Whatever he wants." Have you ever heard of an artist that writes their own contract? And you don't even read it. You just sign it and okay. She, yes, she lets us, even Megan, who didn't go to business school in any way, shape or form. She just walk around looking as good as she tries to. Like her, her secretary basically is like, did you read this contract, Nicole? This is some wild shit. Like he owns everything. Like did we, is she, like, Megan's like, Nicole's like, blah, 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 blah. Just sign them. That's it. That's all I want to hear. I remember when they were in the room and she was like, I got my eyes on you. Like she knew he wasn't shit and she was trying to tell Nicole he wasn't shit. But Nicole was like, eh. She saw this skinny, muscle bound, no shirt wearing. Both of them are similar because neither one of them wore shirts. Like <laughs> they believe it's just chest out, man chest, woman chest. It don't matter. Like, he was like, he showed so many chest tattoos. I was like, he's Chris Brown or he's the brother from, from Double Cross. He's one of them. I was like, maybe he's a combination of both, but he's too sk- he's skinnier than the guy from Double Cross. But I'm like, he still got all the tattoos for no reason. Um, he they they make no effort to check the past of their now star artist. Where is he from? What did he do before he showed up here? Does he have a criminal history? Is he the type of guy that ties people to a chair and shoots them? Huh? Does he have any siblings? Does he have any? Who's his parents? Where are they? Just in case someone comes looking for the money. Just, I mean, just because. Let's check his social media and see if there's any people that look for me. Just, hmm. You would, th- you would imagine that maybe somewhere on this the Instagram, Twitter thing that he's blowing up, you would think he's like, this is my crew. This is my family. You know, just in case someone comes for the money, right? Like you might want to know something about your new star artist. Absolutely none of that happens. Nicole is being harassed slash raped by Walter, who always plays a weasel. Like this actor always plays some type of weasel. And this, he sounds like he's special needs in this in this movie. He's always stammering and stuttering. I'm like, does he have a medical condition? All time, like drunk, stroke, like something. I'm not making fun of people with special needs. I'm just saying he looked like he got special needs. I'm like, but he's like the lead attorney. For this record label and i'm confused like did something happen to him i mean again did he have a stroke and maybe he needs to be replaced because like he's old as fuck and i'm like and i'm like so i'm like i'm just confused like i mean it, it just it's just a lot of things going on but he's like i have been trying to protect you 
from Elisa who's suing. Oh, well then do something. She's like, what does make then then Nicole is bribing her own like counsel to be like, <laughs> here's 300 grand, but the company is broke. She's balling out everywhere they go. She starts fucking Kingston because she's not having sex with her husband, who did treat her like shit when he was in charge. Like that, I mean, that's true. But now the tables are turned, and he's like, baby, I just I just want to be a, a good husband to you as a good wife. And can we just be together? Can we just be have a son and raise our son? What about our son? It's very interesting. Studio in the basement. He just wants to, he just wants a studio in the basement so he can make a few hits like he used to. And Nicole's like, fuck all that. I'm running this stuff. You take care of the kid. Because her mother did this to, to their family. So you got to understand. So when Nicole's growing up, her mom was constantly leaving the house with new men. And when she left, she took Nicole with her. So at some point, her father is like, you need to be. See, he's sexist, though. Because even he was like, look here, Nicole. It's your job to take care of your husband and your child. I'm like, well, it's my husband's job to be good to me. So I want to take care of him, right? Like, how's this all my fault? Like somehow Nicole's like he, her her daddy's like her dad stayed strong right he took care of her like he you know he wanted to be and he loved his wife even and she finally just never came back that's what should have happened the mom. mama should have came back and been like baby baby you made it can I get a check and then she kills her that's classic that's classic parent comes back right and you like get away from me they like they're too much they're too much dead weight and then you got to kill them like that's Kingston should have helped her kill the, the needy mom and in her mind she's like I'm better than my mom she's like I got rid of the woman that was a terrible mother to me I'm a better mother because I haven't left my family even though you are just as bad because you that left he barely knew who she was remember he, he barely knew who the kid school. was he was like go to mama he was like who the fuck is that, that oh that one okay oh yeah yeah that's yeah it's right there like who the, who the fuck's my family like daddy <laughs> I got a daddy oh shit I never saw that dude Oh shit! Anyway, um, yeah, man, it's we see this kid in this movie about as much as we we see Yaz, um, and that, that's not saying much, you know. It's they changed the actor once again. They changed the kid. Like he went from a relatively dark skinned little boy to a light skinned toddler. We're like, how the fuck did this happen? How do you grow out of your skin tone? Like I'm 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 confused. It happens. Let's see how I go. I mean, I'm saying. Anyway, my point is. It was, it was bad cat. It just, just keep the same kid. Like, this, there's a lot of things going on in this movie. No one's going to notice that the kid really has really aged. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Nicole, again, apparently she had the trauma of seeing her mother have sex with all these men because she starts having flashbacks. And I'm like, is she being molested? Or no, that's her mother. Like, did she sit there and watch her mother have sex with these dudes? Like, maybe she was just hearing it and she's like imagining it. Yeah, those, those, those are very visual things, though. I mean, it looked like she was there. And I'm like, mm. Well, we've seen in other shows that people visualize stuff that I, they allegedly didn't really see. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, so anyway, she, and she's, she's on some kind of medication for some reason. We don't get into that. She's always screaming and taking pills. Um, again, Walter, one night, damn near sexually assaults her. And I'm like, and like, that never gets resolved or you know she kind of mentions it in general but i'm like this dude damn near raped you like shouldn't you be calling the cops on him but she can't because this is the guy that helped forge the the, the will which they still have <laughs> if you forge a will you get rid of the original will because it's called yeah. evidence exactly. that can send you both to jail mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is what happens at the end of this movie mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause this dumb bitch kept the will and so did Walter. So anyway, she's so head over heels in love with Kingston. Um, who they, she, she started it first though. I mean, it wasn't like he came out. She's the one that rubbed his hand on the mouse. Like when they were in the studio, she, she like once she, 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 she wanted the dick like when she saw him. Cause when they had their first meeting, she was like, Hey, how you doing? She, she started it. She did. So when they were, when they're in the studio, go watch. When you're in the studio, he was playing with some like keyboard or something like a mouse and she grabbed the mouse and held his hand and like while they were moving the mouse and she started the flirting. I mean, once he realized he had an opening, he he went for it. I just think that she says she knows men. She don't know business. So what she does is she walks around with no shirt on. 
and she bends over in people's faces and holds their hands or probably touches them a little bit too long. That's just the way she manipulates people. That's what I think. It's funny you should say that because when he thought, oh, I can get the ass and, she, and he tried, she was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm married. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I totally misread this. And he actually was like, oh, you know, let me apologize. This ain't a Me Too situation. He's like, I'm, I'm my bad boss, boss. Like, I'm sorry that I tried to hump you. Later on, she said, no, you can have it. And, and you know, they, they get real steamy in the shower. It was a lot. It was a lot. But again, you shouldn't fuck your employees, men or women. Like, that's not just not a good look. I mean, you can get sued. Um, and um, so when the money starts rolling in, when- I wouldn't kids, be surprised if that was in the contract. He probably but, wrote it in there, sex. Sex with the CEO. Like, he put everything else in there. She didn't even read the contract. I would thought he put it in the contract that he can't be sued or fired. That's something he probably could put in the contract. And then somehow they want us to believe that tearing up a piece of paper stops the contract. Cause he was like, well, I'll just tear up my contract. She's like, no, don't do that. It's okay. No bitch. It's a contract. Like, you know, copy. Right. It's, it's, it's a signed document. Like it's somewhere in the digital 2020 age. I'm sure they got, they got, a, they got a soft copy somewhere that says you have committed to us for X amount of records or deals or some shit. Um, anyway, so their love sescapade gets goes on. Again, her friend Megan is constantly reminding her they are going under financially. But her and Kingston are balling. Oh. He got a Mercedes, a Rolls Royce. He got a Rolls Royce is what he has. A white Rolls Royce. At some point, some girl gets in it with blonde hair and sucks his dick. And I'm like, who is that? I thought that was Nicole. Like they show her from the back. And like he opens, like when he gets the Rolls Royce, right? The door, like anyway, some girl walks out, just gets down and starts sucking while he's driving. And I thought it was Nicole, but I was like, she has, she has a blonde, she is a black woman, but she had like blonde hair. And I was like, that's not Nicole, is it? I was like, come on, Nicole, you're better than this. But it wasn't Nicole, but like it was some other random woman. I'm like, who is this? Anyway, Kings Kingston buys Nicole, his boss, a like, a Lamborghini with the money he's making from her company. But the company is going under as you hear over and over again. But I mean, I don't know the music business, but if you're working for a company, the company gets paid and they pay you, I would yes. think. But he had it set up where he got paid directly. Which I was like, because she kept asking, she was like, you know, we got all these sales and he released a single that she didn't know about. And where's the money from this coming from? He was like, it's, it's coming to me. It's in my contract. I, I, I didn't pay. And she was like, what? what? Yeah, yeah. It's in my, yeah. He picks his way. He picks, he produces, writes, produces, and, and distributes his own music when he feels like it, how he feels like it. And she didn't read one word of this shit. And Megan is constantly trying to tell her, you need to look into this. This is not a good thing. We're losing money. He's making money and we're losing money because studio time costs money. But and and but he, he ain't paying for any of that shit somehow. You know what I'm saying? So it's usually the artists that get screwed over because the record label will give them X amount of money over a contract. But as they go on tour, as they do everything they do is coming out of their royalties. So in the end, they act, somehow they end up owned. Sometimes they owe the studio more money because they're like, "Hey, you know how much money we spent out for your dancers and for your publicity and like all that shit comes out of that big paycheck we 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 told you you were gonna get." Like, my um, Hammer learned that really quick. Like when he went out with that second album, like the too legit to quit shit, and he brought the entire Oakland city with him. Broke as fuck because all those people get paid, bro. <laughs> that shit ain't free. Rihanna learned that fucking uh, most of those R&B artists that are just new to the game and they want these big, big, elaborate concerts. The motherfuckers get paid. All those people get paid. That comes out of your royalties. Another pick Kanye. See, something. Hey, studio ain't paying for that shit. They gave you a check up front. Ain't my fault. They're like, ain't my fault. You spent your money. That's not our money. We are getting our money. So well, some artists don't pay their people. So you have to oh. come back and sue. <clears throat> Kanye. I think the choir was suing him. Oh, damn. The choir. 
They were suing him. And of course, P. Diddy don't pay nobody, so whatever. He's like, you get you. you. <laughs> this, and this thing was based on P. Diddy. You can tell by the guy. Well, there you go. He looked like a, like a broke ass P. Diddy. I mean, he did. He's black as fuck. Um, but yeah, it, it was. Notice the color difference? Look, he black as shit. Look at her. Anyway, my point is <sighs> colorism, sad. I'm just, I was just upset. I was upset that once again, black girl got no lines. If you look her up on IMDb, she didn't even put her face on next to this movie. That, that, I think that's how little the actress was like, I'm that le- least credited in this movie. Why am I associating myself with this movie? Anyway. He got a picture. Yeah. Security guy got a picture. She ain't got a picture. So anyway, Kingston and Nicole's love, you know, goes through his changes. Her husband is knowing that he, she's doing something with somebody. He's trying to fight for his marriage. Nicole don't give a fuck. Uh, Walter over here, Walter over here gets too big for his britches and really starts to be like, I'm a, I'm a blackmail you. So Kingston says, hey, baby, I'm a, she did it. She said, hey, I got a problem. So you want me to handle it? I got a problem. You tell your gangster boyfriend you got a problem with said man. What do you think is going to happen? So Kingston kidnaps this dude, takes him to some garage, ties him to a chair, beats him up, invites Nicole over, I guess just to watch or whatever. She's like, I can't believe you did this. I, you told me to do it. I was like, why are you fucking with these kids? Like, this is what, oh God. They make bad decisions. And then you stuck with it. Anyway, Kingston shoots this dude. And you're like, fuck. Then he's like, I've got rid of the body. I buried the body. Nicole goes. But the body gets found. You're like, I thought you said you buried the body. Of course. But the body got found. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, did he use the airport? Huh? Did he use the airport? <laughs> but then she would have told on him. I've never, I've never hit a body, but I'm just guessing. If you go to the New York airport, section B, row seven, you might find you might you might find it. I'm just throwing it out there. Anyway, we, we gotta stop doing this. So it <laughs> so eventually, because of the will, okay. So the P. Diddy's daughter, Elisa, she finally cracks the case somehow. She brings in the feds, they shut down the they shut down the company like it was a Rico case. Like I'm like that's what I, I thought one of her charges was gonna be some type of Rico. I was like, she ran out of money and she, like, she is the criminal. The, the, the That's what I didn't get. Because remember, they were chasing Megan that hall and she took, <laughs> she her took shoes off her shoes. shoes. Like, unless there were running guns and drugs. What's up? <laughs> you lucky they didn't shoot you. <laughs> but, right? This is the white FBI. You lucky they didn't shoot your happy ass. Like, I really thought she was going to be like, blop, blop. I was like, say my name. I was like, oh, shit. But I'm like, so if you would have found out that for real, like Nicole and Megan, Megan was keeping the company afloat by, by running cocaine or like hose or something. And you're like, so yeah. the whole, it's a, I'm like, okay, okay. I, I accept why they're shut. They got the FBI full float force <laughs> chasing down employees while the shoes are off. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Anyway, <laughs> Nicole is like, sometimes life catches up with you. You got to pay the bill at some point. Yeah, bitch, because you stole this company and made no effort to hide the evidence. All you had, it, all she needed was a shredder. A shredder would have saved most of this end of this movie. She could have walked away. Lighter, just burn it up. Just burn it up. Shred it up. Just what are you doing? Hold. She not only does she hold it, she don't even secure it. Kingston gums into her op- check. He runs into the into her office. Megan is following him. The door closes. She can't open it. It's a cipher, right? She can't figure out the cipher. Hold up. Then Nicole comes, just walks in the door. They forgot about the cipher. She's it's open. A fingerprint. It's a fingerprint. She just stop. Stop. I was like, what? I said, like, what about the cipher? I was like, oh. Maybe you have face ID. I was like, what are we doing? Anyway, he gets, he, it, fuck. He gets the will. It, it all comes out. He gets the will. He's like, guess what? My sister's going to get the company. She's, he's like, no, no, that's no, that's not, no, no, no. He says, you know, my dad owned this office. When I was nine years old, I used to walk around here with my dad. I was like, she was like, your dad? And I'm like, your dad? 
Apparently, this is P. Diddy's son that no one knew about. Mm -hmm. And the sister's brother that none of us knew about. Walter didn't even know. And Walter was his was P. Diddy's I, business I, I partner. Don't get, I don't get that. If anything, Walter should have said, oh, I know you're so so. She's been sleeping. And that's with why he killed her, because he was going to spill that he was the brother. If he would have said, motherfucker, I recognize, bam. Yeah. Bam. That would have, right, instead of crying and begging, like, I'm sorry that I tried to take, I tried to hurt her. I didn't mean to do it. Uh, look here, Forrest Gump. Like, get your shit together. Like, that's that's the scene that's what you see right oh wait wait like he's getting beat up he's like oh wait wait i recognize you Boop. Mm -hmm. and right then i'm like oh what do you mean right then that would have made sense but they want us to believe that not only did walter not recognize her recognize him nicole didn't recognize him Nobody and she was in the company said oh isn't that junior none of them no no one it <sighs> But Stacey said she knew it. She said she said she. I knew it. I knew he was connected to the sister. I didn't think they were stupid enough to play the brother role. I think maybe a boyfriend, a husband, cousin, whatever. Like secrets. Not a brother. Not a brother. But I knew he like he was coming at her too hard. I was like he he's up to something. Either he was he. I knew he wanted to take the company. I didn't know if he was going to marry her, and try to get the company up under her some kind of way. But I knew he. And then when he was going after Walter, I was like, well, it would make sense to kill Walter and the sister, I mean, the daughter, but he didn't kill the daughter. I was like, he connected to that. He's connected to her some kind of way. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. I thought in the end, you know, she being the hustler, she gets hustled by her new man and then he's in charge of the thing. And she's like, how did shit this happen? Blah, 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 blah. But no, 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 no. It was a family. It was a family affair. He and his sister Lisa worked together to take down this woman, and he just had to sleep with her. He had to sleep with Nicole. But she mentioned that she said, "I want." He did not mention her in his mur in his murder trial of Walter. He went to he went to jail pretty much for the rest of life, I'm sure, still protecting the woman that he screwed over. He's no snitch. That's all that is. Oh, okay. Street code. So she goes to jail for five years for fraud after she got chased down by the by the feds and her best friend you would think that she would have she should have visited him kingston to ask him like 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 th th thank you like thank you for you know thank you for you know for keeping like this is something to be like hey and he'd be like you know what girl they know you know I, I'm not a snitch, or I still love you. Like to get some kind of res resolution, why he went through all this shit to to ruin her, but he didn't want her to go to jail. He took a body for her. That don't make any sense. Uh, mm. Anyway, not none none of this makes any sense. Oh, uh, don't watch this movie. Is what I'm saying. Man, I, I should start off with that. Like this, let's not do this. Like just go watch Empire again. Like this. Again, because Cookie Lion is supposed to get her spinoff, which is going to be dumb as shit. Because how you do, you can't do a spinoff without Lucius. You can't do any story with Cookie cannot have it without Lucius or her kids. It's dumb as shit. It's just not going to mean anything. Like it's just not possible and be realistic. Anyway, what I'm saying is, just go watch it. Go, go watch the last season of Empire, um, which didn't end actually well how it was supposed to because COVID like stopped the ending. They were actually going to go for like a power ending, but they said fuck it. You know, show ain't getting renewed. Thank you, Jesse Smollett. Fuck it up, Chip. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Urban Move Channel got more gems like this. We're gonna work through these. Uh, it was classic, man. It was, it was it was classic. I was like, this is this is prime time, all all black. I was like, yes. This actually reminded me a lot. We're you no, know we're we doing. We're getting ramped up for. Uh, that's right, a house divided. <laughs> Who had a record label in it? The son, the son started a record label. Which one? The bisexual one. He started a record label. Yes. I don't remember that. He started a record label. Yeah, yeah. 
He was out there spinning. That's because when they when they sold the business, like he wanted that he felt that was the future. Like he's trying to invest the 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 profits from selling the bank into a record label. He was shooting a a a, a booty girl boot video, um, actually at one point. He don't know shit about anything, but he's like, I just hired the right people and they can make things happen, right? It's like, no, you're just spending a lot of money. Anyway, point is, House Divided coming up this week. Uh, Stacey and I will run through this as it's happening, as opposed to just waiting for the season to be over and be like, why the hell did we watch this? Uh, we can just say it every week. Uh, it's just, hey, we do it with Tyler Perry, so. We do it, I know, right? Just add it to the list. <laughs> Yeah, think you know things are coming out. You know what I'm saying? You know things are wrapping up for the you know for the for the seasons. You know a couple of shows. So like you know we have we have some free time on our calendar, and uh, we can give you all right. We're going all black on all black. We're going all in and all black. There you go. In 2022, 2021, that's what we're doing. I really thought this was gonna be a TV show, and I was like, please don't do it. But then I saw it was a movie. I was like, oh, I can do. I can knock this out. If they would stretch this out over to five, six episodes, I would have been mad as shit. No. Mad. Ooh. Very mad. <laughs> um, I know just that this I gotta do anything. Uh Insecure. You watch Insecure? I have. As much as I call out colorism, that's why I respect Insecure. A dark skinned woman and a dark skinned best friend are the leads of that show. With a dark, relatively dark skinned man. Like that is revolutionary on TV these days. That's that's not joke. Look at power. Am I wrong? No. Every couple, every couple, one of them will be dramatically lighter than the other. One of them. Usually, it's the man who's darker and the woman who's lighter. Usually, but if it happens to be other way around, be damned. You will not see two relatively dark to brown skinned people together. You won't see it, no matter who's producing it. White, black, Latino, man, woman, it doesn't matter. All of them do the same thing. Well, we got it in four parts. They were both brown. Yes. Yes, yes. I say it never happens, but it's rare, though. Mm-hmm. I'm like, even, even when we were watching Power today, I was like, Bouchandra's parents, Lauren's parents. I'm like, classic. We didn't see uh, uh, Carlton's parents or even Carlton. I was like, where's he at? I wanted to see the two people that made that Oreo. What the fuck? Like, I, I was, I, I'm like, if, you, if you're going to show Bouchandra, you need to show the other side. Literally, on, literally the other side can sit on the other side of the room. I mean, so it would be interesting to see, like, those, especially about um, Invisible Man. That would be interesting to get his perspective as a black man who oh, no one else believes in the quote, black community at that school is black to see his perspective on it. That would be interesting. Anyway, I know, right? Some part we gotta do power. Go watch our power review, um, and uh, we we will uh, be back for uh, a lot of things uh, this week. Uh, Stacey and I got a got a full crew of stuff to look after. Um, if you're new to the channel, if you got new things, uh, so spill the tea. I'm pretty sure she will watch this, and we appreciate your support. If there's something else you want us to watch, uh, let us know. Uh, that Loretta Divine movie. Um, she she uh, she gave a mention in that. I, I I'll show it to you. Um, but we can look that. Oh, we got to do um, Chadwick Boseman's movie too. You watched it yet? It's good. It's good. It's good. Uh-huh. So that's actually a movie we can actually enjoy watching. Um, a good yeah. one. There's a change of pace. Um, <laughs> Viola Davis is in it. She don't do crap. I gotta say that. I mean, I've, I've never seen Viola do something. I'm like, come on, Viola. Why, why are you doing this, man? This, you, you better than this. I've, I, I never said. I thought something just went too far, but I'm like, I've never been like, you better than this. Anyway. All right, guys, uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Like on the video, comment on the video, share the video. Um, let us know what you want us to watch, uh, why you still watch us. Uh, we, we appreciate it. Uh, numbers are growing, and we appreciate that. Um, we do our best to guy give you some good stuff, and we will see you at the movies. Well, we won't because of COVID. You know what I mean. Next time. <laughs>